So the GOP has offered an alternative bill. It would leave 17% of all Americans uninsured, the same percentage as today. The Democratic bill would cover nearly everyone. The GOP plan would shave $68 billion off the deficit. The Democratic plan would cut the deficit almost twice that much. And pre-existing conditions, they will still exist under the Republican plan. The Democratic plan would make that kind of insurance discrimination illegal. That's where the debate should be, on the differences between the Democratic and Republican proposals. But the House GOP leadership has now embraced the most extreme elements of the Republican Party. Yesterday, Republican lawmakers participated in a rally supposedly against the Democrats' health care plan, but it had all the trappings of a proverbial orgy of bigotry, racism, anti-Semitism, and hate. One after another, the celebrity speakers delivered vicious attacks on President Obama. His only success in his one-year term as president is taking America apart, piece by piece. Could it be he has had 20 years of subconscious programming by Reverend Wright to damn America? Then Republican leaders spoke, and as they continued the Obama bashing, Directly in front of that lectern was this sign of President Obama in a white coat, his face painted to look like the Joker. It said, Stop Obamunism. Of course, there were other offensive signs, like this one. Can you trust Obama? A reference to right-wing claims that the President of the United States is secretly a Muslim terrorist. This particular sign was autographed by Iowa Republican Congressman Steve King. Yes, he autographed it. Other lawmakers signed autographs for protesters in the shadow of this banner. A photograph of corpses at a Nazi concentration camp. The word said National Socialized Health Care. Is there no shame anymore on the conservative right? Is there no decency anymore? A lot of Americans, a lot of us across the political spectrum grew up hearing about entire branches of our family who were slaughtered in concentration camps. And for all we know, they may have been among the corpses stacked in that pile, photographed and used yesterday by the far right. When anybody compares a health care proposal to the murders at Nazi death camps, it's offensive. And it diminishes all of us by diminishing just how evil the Holocaust really was. And yet the Republican House leaders yesterday, they were indifferent. And I saw a lot of signs. I saw a lot of American flags. And I didn't see anything uh, that I thought was disrespectful. Uh, did someone have a sign that may have said something? They may have. I didn't see it. What has become of our politics when not a single American lawmaker is willing to say to their own supporters, take that banner down, or refuses to acknowledge later, yes, that sign should not have been there? Is it because the GOP leadership now embraces the frenzy on the right, even if it is fueled by hatred, racism, and ignorance? Is that good for America? Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. When a rally features racism and hatred, do elected leaders attending that rally have a responsibility to condemn it? Text A for yes, B for no to 622-639. We will bring you the results later in the show. Now, for more, let's bring in Marcus Mulitzas, publisher of The Daily Coast, and Tom Tancredo, former Republican congressman from Colorado. Congressman, why is it that the House Republican leadership is legitimizing hate? They're not they're any more than any Democrat who spoke to the thousands of crowds and rallies that were in Washington, D.C. against Bush, where people go to the go to your computer, Google um, posters against Bush at rallies. Uh, it'll explode. You got Bush posters with the S's looking like right. You're like talking about Nazi code pink, service. and there were not Democratic yeah, yeah. lawmakers. Oh, listen, That's the difference. Yeah, you weren't listen, don't, Congressman. Oh, the, the, the House Bologna. Democratic Bologna. leadership was not there. Crap. Don't don't interrupt me. You just ask me a question, and I'm telling you that there were plenty of posters just as offensive. And Democrats were speaking at the same time. Gal, I remember one gal carrying around a poster with a bush head severed from the torso and all bloody. Nobody said anything about that. Listen, this poster. Right, that was wrong. But ridiculous. here's the question: Is why didn't you say something about it then? To, Congress, so let's, let's, let's make it clear. Go back is to it insurance. wrong? Is it wrong when somebody shows a photo bill. at any rally? When they show a photo at any rally of a Nazi concentration? camp to try to make a point about anything is yeah. that ever you appropriate bet it's ever ugly. you bet never it's all ugly i tell you it's been ugly for a long long time but there's been no reaction by the part of on the press to all the crap i saw when i was in the congress of the united states and and people were coming there with posters and stuff about george bush that were that would make your hair 
uh, stand on end. But nobody said anything then. Okay. It's, well, it's a actually, lot a lot of people junk. did, it's but let's get to Marcus Millitzis. Marcus, what's going on Who here? Did? Who did that? Well, All of us. I remember on, doing segments on the hardball where we would fo feature Code Pink and some of the tactics they, do, they were using. But that's another issue. Marcus, what's going on here on the Republican right? Yeah, absolutely. There's been cranks on the left as well in some of those protests, but the difference is that the Democratic leadership did not stand in solidarity with those people. You did not have Nancy Pelosi or Harry Reid or any top senator or congressman with those people encouraging them and, and leading the kind of chants and the kind of encouragement that we saw yesterday. I mean, this is some of the ugliest rhetoric I, I think that I've seen uh, in politics in a while, including some of the more uh, ridiculous anti-Bush stuff. And Marcos, um, what does it do in terms of Democrats who, that you're targeting, for example, who may be looking for moderates? How can there be Democratic moderates who are looking for moderate Republicans to work with when it doesn't appear that the party is willing to embrace the moderates? Well, there are moderate, I think, Republicans left. They're not in Congress. Those people are long gone, long extinct. Uh, but these are people like in New York 23 who were Republicans. This is a uh, district that hadn't seen a Republican in 100, uh, hadn't seen a Democrat in 120 years. And he elected a Democrat last Tuesday because these moderate Republicans realized that the modern Republican Party no longer represents them. Any party that will use pictures of dead Jewish children and compare that to affordable health care really has lost its ethical and, and moral moorings. Uh, Congressman Tim well, Credo, no uh, Speaker Boehner, Speaker, well, yesterday there was, a, there, was a, there was a poster, there was a banner. We can show it again if you like. It was right there. Some of your ex-colleagues were there signing autographs under the banner. It didn't say a word. But on the issue of health care itself, when House Minority Leader Boehner says that this Democratic health care proposal is the biggest threat to freedom he has ever seen, do you agree with him that it's the biggest threat that you've yes. ever seen? Really? Bigger than you communism, well, bigger than terrorism, uh, bigger than of, loose nuclear of, weapons? Yeah. Go ahead. It's a, it's a threat because it's coming from the President of the United States, it's coming from the leadership in the Congress, and it is a threat to the American way of life. It is, in fact, socialism. It is, in fact, taking over a huge, huge part of our economy. And, and you know, so therefore, it is a true and very scary threat. And that's one th place I certainly agree with you, in that instead of all this, what, what I certainly believe is poster posturing, I mean, we don't even know that that poster that you're looking at, for all I know, it was a Democrat like the, the one in um, Michigan. You know, remember the big, the guy holding the, the po poster of there Obama were a lot of posters looking like yesterday. a Nazi? That was a Democrat. That was a well, Democrat nobody spoke doing that. Nobody, if it was a Democratic you know, So how do I know? You, you how do say, I know? You say something. It could have been. It could have been. Well, well, it well Congressman, been. let's explore. What it you could have been about for all a threat. I know. But, but we should go back and talk about health care. You're right. That's far right. more important what, than well, when, when you Well, when you describe it as a threat, what specifically are you referring to? Because a lot of Americans who have Medicare, which is essentially a single-payer government system, does Medicare threaten the security of the United States right now? Well, the th that's an interesting point because, of course, the way that they try to say that this particular bill that they've proposed is, is not going to cost us uh, a trillion eight hundred billion dollars is because they're going to take, I mean, an, an extra money is because they're going to take about five hundred billion out of Medicare. Medicare has already got lots and lots of problems, and I do think it's a problem. Absolutely. You can't okay, keep doctors in Okay, so how about the Veterans Administration? The Veterans Administration is a single-payer system. Same Everybody thing. in the military yeah. who was treated yesterday. Go. So the, the military members, their health care system, that's also a, fre a threat to our freedom. It, it, talk to every veterans group I ever went and talked to complained about the Veterans Administration and the way it was a bureaucratically run program that didn't serve their needs. They would much rather have vouchers that would allow them to go out and buy their insurance <laughs> in a private marketplace. They've talked about it. At least you're, you're laughing. What you may, but want. talk to the veterans. They talked to me, and that's what they said. Marcos? I, 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 so I'm, I'm telling a, I'm you, there is no government Tom. own... Tom, I'm, yeah. I'm a veteran, okay? I, I did not get a deferment because I was too depressed to fight in a war that I supported in Vietnam. I'm, I'm a veteran, Tom. Yeah, well, that's and, a, and you know, what that's people a want, cheap, they want a no more effective, they want a say. more effective and, and, you VA. Know, you, you cannot, that's no, more listen, money. No, you're not going to do, you're not going to do that. You're not going to, you're not going to try to insult me that way and then pretend like we're just going on and talk about that. You either apologize I'm not pretending I'm anything. I told you straight up. The issue here is what the Republicans are afraid of. They, this is a threat to Republicans. They built a, an entire uh, ideology predicated on telling people that government does not work. They are terrified of government programs that work because then people will realize that the government's not the enemy and that they're going to work, uh, they're going to they're gonna vote Democratic because Democrats are the party who realize that people need help and government can sometimes offer solutions.
Thank you, Marcos Melitzas, and also Congressman Tom Tancredo for the time that he was with us. I think he left a little bit early, but uh, the congressman is always welcome in the show. We always appreciate hearing his uh, point of view, and uh, it's a feisty one, and that's what we like around here. Marcos, thank you as well. One final comment regarding the health care situation in this country. The status quo right now is this. 45,000 Americans die each year because they don't have health insurance. Our nation ranks 31st in life expectancy, 34th in maternal mortality, and 37th in infant mortality. For one party, one half of our political system did not take this problem seriously and to refuse to offer any real serious solutions is a disgrace. There are legitimate concerns, as the congressman raised, about deficit spending and the role of the government in tackling our health care problem. But concentration camps and communist takeovers are not among them. For Republican leaders to suggest otherwise is a degradation of the office they hold. And if these elected Republicans think government is so evil, perhaps they should consider another line of work.